This captivating creature is a lionfish. They're beautiful indeed, but beware, needle-sharp venomous spines pack a nasty punch. Native to the Indo-Pacific, lionfish are now an invasive species across the Caribbean and much of the Western Atlantic. They've spread out in all directions, millions of square miles of ocean. Efficient predators and prolific breeders, they wipe out native species at an alarming rate. In Mexico, Florida, and the Caribbean, suppression efforts are barely making a dent in their rapidly increasing numbers. Lionfish have now made their way to Central and South America. In Florida, teams of scuba divers compete in lionfish derbies to see who can spear or capture the most lionfish in a single day. And people certainly love to hunt. I'm here to kill lionfish, mm -hmm. gladly. Kill them all and let God sort them out, because they're evil and I hate them. Wily entrepreneurs are racing to invent new and more lethal weapons to kill lionfish. Conservation groups are focusing significant resources on controlling the lionfish invasion. Scuba divers, spear fishermen, and government agencies all are united in their efforts to wipe out this destructive species. It's all-out war on these toxic invaders. species colonizes such a wide geographic area or variety of habitats as lionfish. They're everywhere, right from the surface down to a depth of a thousand feet. As an invasive species, they're the perfect biological storm. people know what a lionfish is or why they're a threat, but they should. Do you know what a lionfish is? No, I don't. What is it? Do you know what a lionfish is? No. No, I have no idea. Never heard of a lionfish. I think its face has like whiskery fins. I think they're very vicious. I got a lionfish under my boat. It's about as big as this basket. Probably tastes better though. Nearly 3,000 square miles in size, the Florida Keys National Marine Sanctuary stretches from South Miami to the Dry Tortugas. Within its boundaries lie extensive coral reefs. The third largest barrier reef on the planet, 6,000 species of marine life call it home. The list of environmental challenges facing the sanctuary is daunting, but never before has it encountered a threat as potentially destructive as lionfish. For the most part, the early reports were isolated to South Florida, and they were pretty few and far between until about 2000. And in 2000, we began to see reports coming from the east coast of the U.S. as far north as North Carolina and out to Bermuda. And around then, people started saying, wait a second, this isn't just one or two fish anymore. Something's going on, and we're seeing increases in distribution and increases in abundance of lionfish. And that's when we really started looking into what this might mean for the region. Captain Gary Mace owns and operates Conk Republic Divers. The lionfish invasion has given many in this business cause for concern. Hey, Jim. Hey, hey Gary. Good to see you, buddy. Good to see you, buddy. Good to see you. Gary is joined by underwater cameraman Jim Cosmic. 
Both divers know firsthand just how painful a lionfish encounter can be. Gary and Jim have both been stung. I didn't really feel much at first, just a sharp, you know, a spike. But about three hours later, it just came on like gangbusters. Very strong, pulsing nerve pain. Very painful and constant throbbing in your arm. And it really hurt for about three days. And I only hit a small one. To gain a better understanding of the lionfish invasion, marine biologist Dr. James Wood joined the dive team. How you doing? Pretty good. Pretty yeah, good. welcome to the Keys. Ready to hunt some lionfish down? I am, I am. Okay, well, we got them waiting for you. All right, let's go. All right, come on. So the reefs out here, they're my livelihood. I come out here and I never see as many fish as I do right here on the Florida Keys. And that's what brings a lot of people down. These lionfish are eating the, the little babies, the juvenile fish, if you will. Uh, it's going to devastate the reef. When it devastates the reef, it kills the fish, kills my livelihood. It's very important for us to find and destroy these lionfish. Supposedly these gloves are lionfish proof. I hope. The eagle is an artificial reef a ship purposely sunk to attract marine life, and scuba divers. There's lots of dark corners and recesses, ideal places for fish to hide and to hunt. It's perfect habitat for lionfish. Because the wreck lies in deep water, the team uses rebreathers, high-tech equipment that allows the divers to venture deeper and stay underwater longer. After just a few minutes, they spot a lionfish. It makes no attempt to flee and seems to be unafraid of divers. But it's currently illegal in the sanctuary to spear fish while using rebreathers, so this lionfish is safe for now. To collect and spear lionfish on the shallow reef, the dive team switches to regular scuba gear. With clear capture nets, Gary traps his first lionfish. But not all lionfish are so easy to catch. After a few escapes, Gary turns to a conventional pole spear. And the hunt really begins. Considering their environmental impact, every lionfish removed from the reef is a small victory. Pretty neat following Gary around and watching him capture the two methods, one with a spear, the ones that we couldn't bag, and the ones that are out on top of the reef, we tried to bag them, and uh, Gary got a few of them. I'm a marine biologist, and I've been on assignment all over the world, but these are my local reefs. This is where I grew up, and as a kid, we didn't see lionfish. Now they're in a lot of different areas, and, and it's uh, really uh, disturbing to see them and see how many of them there are out there. South Florida has a lot of invasive species, pythons, iguanas, and tilapia. Pythons are a real problem in the Everglades, but they're mostly restricted to the Everglades. Lionfish, on the other hand, are broadcast spawners. A female lionfish can put out two million eggs per year. And those eggs go up into the currents and then gets distributed all over the greater Caribbean area, lots of different countries. Here we go. How'd you make out? Not bad. We got three more monsters off the reef. We did great. We saw a bunch. We got three in the bag. Success. There's a way that they actually tell the age of these things. Uh, there's some bone inside them. It's like a, they say it's like a tree. They can actually measure the size of that. And I guess they start counting the rings. Now these guys, I'd say they're probably maybe a little more than a year old. Uh, what I'm going to go ahead and do first is cut these spines off, make it a little, little better for us to grab. 
So we just take the scissors and cut the spines off. Now there's still venom inside and underneath the skin there on the spines, but uh, we're taking the sharp needle point off so we won't have to worry about getting stuck, hopefully. And he's not so dangerous now. He won't be eating any more fish off our reef, that's for sure. Jessica Pulfer is the director of Marine Lab, a research and educational facility in Key Largo. Hi, James. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. I brought some lionfish with me. Awesome. Ooh, nice fish. Thank you. First thing we can take a look at is this mouth. I love that his mouth is kind of open. That's one way that they are such good predators is by simply opening up that mouth and then whatever is nearby just gets sucked right in. This is the business end of the fish. This is uh, where their defense mechanism comes on. We can pull open this dorsal spine that they have, or these, this dorsal fin that they have on top. Looks like a needle. It is pretty much a, a needle, like a hypodermic needle. Um, the only place that you can get the venom is right at the tip of that needle. So if I were to just stick my finger right there, mm -hmm. I'd probably get a little venom in. So if you were to eat one of these as a predator, you'd probably get a spine or three in you. Be a nasty case of indigestion. You should call these punk rock fish. And we caught this little guy with the tropical fish net. He's cute. Even that little guy packs a mean punch. Oh yeah, look at those spines. Thanks Jessica for letting us use Marine Lab. It's, it's been fun, I've learned a lot, and I hope to see you at the Derby. It's Derby Day in Key Largo. A dozen teams from across South Florida are here to capture, spear, and to kill as many lionfish as possible. Where are they at? We're ready. We are ready, my man. We got the frappers, we got the catch bags, we got a beautiful day in Key Largo, Florida. We got the frapper. We got the captain's version here. It works very much like a, uh, a bow and arrow or a slingshot. We like to call it old technology wrapped in a new package. Prepare to be controlled. Resistance is futile. <laughs> I'm here to kill lionfish. Gladly. Kill them all and let God sort them out. Because they're evil and I hate them. It's open season on the invaders. No bag limits, very few rules. An all-out offensive against public enemy number one. Get some air on board for people. Captain's got to find them. And yes, they are widespread throughout Atlantic and Caribbean, but it's no guarantee we're going to find fish on every dive. So, no guarantee. Between our girl over here with local knowledge and Mike with local knowledge, we're going to find some fish, aren't we, huh? Yes, yeah. yes. We're going to head out off Key Largo here. We're going to get into an area known as Hawks Channel. This is a pathway, if you will, out in the ocean that parallels the shoreline of the Florida Keys. Okay. Yeah. Good plan. Bob Hickerson is one of a handful of entrepreneurs developing new weapons to handle and to kill lionfish. It's a booming business. After a brief run out to sea from the marina, Team Frapper is ready to rumble. All teams must be back to shore with their lionfish catches by 5 p.m. There's no time to waste. It's 8 a.m. and Team Salty Dog is off to a very late start. Both Team Frapper and Team Salty Dog hope to dominate the competition, but a lionfish hunt is at best a crapshoot. You never know where they are or if they've been fished out. The number of lionfish we get uh, is partly luck uh, as well as our own skill in underwater and finding them. Uh, we might end up at the end of the day with three lionfish or we might end up with 300. Hey Dan, yeah. just grab a mask and fins. No scuba and just jump in and take an eyeball. Alright. We're close to the mangroves. A lot of uh, juvenile fish hang out. Uh, shallower water. Right now we're like an eight foot. 
depth. We're just checking to see if we can find a rock formation. Topography is grassy plains. Uh, something this area is known for, but not what we're looking for. So uh, we're gonna go try something different. Dive, dive, dive. We just jumped in at about 15 feet to see if we could find any rock formations where the lionfish may be hiding. But we, uh, the visibility is pretty poor and all we saw was grasslands. So we're gonna head out to some bluer water and our hunt for the lionfish. Yeah. Yeah. It's gonna get much better when we go deeper. Yeah, I hope deep. we just find one. <laughs> we'll find more than one. We just gotta go deeper into some blue yeah. water. We got a wall dive. We're on top of the wall right now, about 40, 45 feet and the wall slides down to about 90 to 100 feet to the sand. As a safety precaution, divers deploy marker buoys. The buoys indicate where team members are and also let other boaters know that divers are just below the surface. Lionfish uh, love structure, uh, whether it's shallow structure, deep structure, it doesn't matter. Artificial reefs are great, whether it's, you know, wrecks, pipes, etc. They like the ledges, anything that gives them up out of the current and secure, usually wherever lobsters are. Even though sonar profiles showed the right topography for lionfish, Team Salty Dog's first few dives resulted in nothing more than a curious sea turtle. I mean, it seems like ideal lionfish territory. Excellent structure, excellent ledges. Uh, they're just not here. Which means other divers have been. <laughs> Either today or past month or so. Please remember that all of the waters of the Florida Keys are a national marine sanctuary, including where we are now. I would start out in the 18, 20 foot where the sand is and move over to the ledge and then just work the ledges. Hey, there's the competition. Look at them. Ah, they don't know what they're doing. dives for Team Frapper also proved to be a bust. The reefs they scour didn't hold any lionfish. Where was the so-called lionfish invasion? Guy, I got skunk. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't see a one. All right, I'm gonna lose my name as spotter. You don't have lionfish, you can't come back on the boat. You gotta go back and get some. <laughs> Perfect habitat. Somebody's already cleaned it off. Didn't find any on a lot of other cool stuff. It's evident that spear fishermen and divers are effective in controlling lionfish numbers. The problem is there's far more terrain, millions of square miles, that is not visited by scuba divers or is too deep. That's where lionfish seem to be thriving. Both teams decide to try their luck in more remote areas where scuba divers rarely visit. And they weren't disappointed. At last, the salty dog's luck changes for the better. They finally discover some lionfish. structure in the whole reef we went up to and there was one, two, three, three lionfish. I told you there was an invasion. I got them all in the last like 30 seconds of the dive. <laughs> I killed all three of those when I had 500 pounds of air. I was quite literally starting to pick them up and I saw one. So then I'm like, oh well. <laughs> I did call this my lionfish killer because uh, 
I bought it a month ago, and I've killed 187 so far. So, uh, <laughs> she's a lethal little girl. <laughs> All right, we got a spot. First two turned up negative. This one sounds very promising. Somewhere around 50 uh, to 80 feet. Immediately upon entry, Bob Hickerson spots the first of several lionfish, a proverbial fish in a barrel. Uh, first one uh, you and I came upon, that small one in the barrel spot, and uh, man, it was like perfect setup. The frapper's buck also changes. Their last two dives turn into a shooting gallery. Most lionfish don't make much of an effort to hide or avoid divers. Their defensive spines are generally quite effective and deter most predators, but not these hunters. Oh, look at that. Way to go, Bob. He was deep in underneath the coral head, hanging out. I called Mike over because he had full spear with him and needed a little more reach. Lionfish on this remote reef were sitting ducks for Team Frapper. The last coral head, there was three big ones in it. So we were basically on both sides because there was like a tunnel going under. Well, how'd you do? We did well. Does we the team, well. yeah. yeah. We brought we, a lot back from we, this spot. Yes, we everything everybody came back uh, with something in their bag. Ah, uh, I tell you what, that last spot she missed the count. There were five big ones under that last coral five head. Big ones? And we got them all. I can keep my title now of spotter. There you go. Yes. <laughs> and it just uh, was non-stop spotter. Nice one on that big one. This is a good big. spot, man. Good spot. This is the catch of the day. Maria brought back to the boat. She was in about 30 feet of water when she got this one. It's a nice one. Yep. It's one of the bigger, bigger ones I've seen of recent. That's for sure. On the, on the tool, on the itself. Six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, that's a big one. Great day on the water here in the Keys. I think we got a real good shot at the largest category. Uh, definitely have a contender. All right, it was a good day for us, but a bad day for the lion fan. <laughs> a little bravado is in order. Team Frapper did quite well. Meanwhile, Team Salty Dog is running late. They've only got a few minutes to make the derby cutoff time. This is video footage of the first confirmed lionfish in the Florida Keys. It's difficult to believe the date. It's not that long ago. With cameras in tow, Lad Akins of the Reef Environmental Education Foundation did the honors. It was the first recorded lionfish capture in a full-scale invasion of the Florida Keys. One of the big questions surrounding lionfish, and perhaps something that will never be fully understood, is how they got here in the first place. Forrest Young of Dynasty Marine explains. I believe that this came from some type of either a home aquarium or an aquarium release. Whether it was a well-meaning individual with a pet who didn't want to euthanize it when it outgrew the confines of the tank, or some other situation where these animals got into the wild. But it seemed to spread from the Miami area north and south. We've caught a lot of lionfish over the years. It started off as just a tiny trickle of one here and one there. I mean, it was actually almost a year before I saw my first lionfish after they had been reported here, and now they're everywhere. 
Once a fish becomes established, taking 50 or 2,000 or 5,000 fish really isn't going to make any difference. In order to eliminate this species completely, you probably have to get almost every last one because I believe in my heart that this introduction started with only one or two fish. It remains to be seen how big of a real problem this is going to be over the course of the next decade or two. The lionfish invasion has spurred demand for new equipment in this diving superstore. Just like other sportsmen, lionfish hunters need weapons and gear. These are what a lot of people are going to be thinking of when they're thinking of spear guns and spear fishing. These big guns, these are meant for open water, big fish. You want to go for big papa grouper, this is what you want. But when you want to get up close and personal in the reef and shoot a little lionfish, probably overkill. I need a smaller gun. To use the lionfish pole spear like any other pole spear, all you do is hold that elastic under your thumb, reach that elastic all the way up to the top, and then when you're ready, let it go. These are the nets that you could use to net a lionfish. Uh, if you do take the class to do it within the sanctuary areas, this is what you gotta use. The nice thing about lionfish is that they tend to sit pretty darn still. They don't move too much. So when you're hunting your lionfish, a lot of people like to wear puncture-resistant gloves. Just because of those lionfish spines, they're very, very sharp, very fine, like a needle. So the gloves are going to help prevent any accidental sticks. Team Frapper is the first team back to shore with their catch. It looks like Team Frapper just got in, so we'll go ahead and get them scored and we'll take their maps and uh, okay. we'll see what they brought in. Are you guys all good today? Everybody, Instincts? everybody came back. Oh, it was close. Oh, one of the guys almost got it. Oh, we got some nice ones in here. Oh, that is a beast. Yes. That thing is so big. <laughs> all right. Very nice. Yeah. All right. Each lionfish is measured and logged into the reef database. 272. Every piece of data collected is valuable information in the fight against this invasive species. 134. You're in the lead on all categories. Not too close. <laughs> Little fishy breath. That's, that's a nice fish. All right, All right. Now, now one more of me looking mean. <laughs> so we're here in our third year of lionfish derbies in the Florida Keys, and it's great to see so many of the same familiar faces who are out there having a great day on the water capturing lionfish. Uh, these derbies are a, a fantastic outreach tool. They enable us to spread the word to people who are both familiar and unfamiliar with lionfish, to bring them together where they can socialize, um, have fun watching the lionfish be counted, but also get to taste and sample lionfish because the lionfish that are caught here today are actually cooked up and served. They taste fantastic. Very, very light, flaky white fish, um, similar to hogfish. Big, beautiful fillet. One of the new categories in this year's derby is the smallest fish caught, and this one is tiny. Oh my goodness. That's one of the smallest I've seen. Wow. Oh, nice. I'm going to say 43. I'm going to get a confirmation. That's the smallest in any of the Key Largo derbies so far. It was a really good day out on the water. We did about six dives, and we got about 100 fish. Whoa. Oh. There's definitely a lot less lionfish now that we went through there. Oh, man, we killed it. We did pretty we good. We did really good. We did really good. We're confident about our results. We had a great time out there. The weather was fantastic. We went to probably about 80 spots free diving, and uh, we got a whole bunch of them. We'll see how many we got. We covered probably 70, 80 miles, something like that. So a technique, we were free diving and using nets. We use these tiny little nets. They're maybe like eight inches by eight inches square. So they're really fast to go through the water. We scouted hundreds of spots and we had identified the top ones that we were gonna go to. So we would drop in two free divers and they would go down with the nets, the boat would circle around and we would go down and catch them one, two at a time sometimes, throw them into the boat, a new net is coming right back into the water for us to go down and, and do our next dive. Not all the divers managed to avoid getting stung by a lionfish. 
It's like getting your hand slammed in a car door. Getting your hand slammed in a car door while it's on fire. I almost cried. <laughs> As results pour in, a clearer picture of the day's catch emerges. A lot of lionfish were removed from the reef. Team Salty Dog makes it back to the derby with just a few minutes to spare. The last place we went, it didn't really look like there was going to be that much. Uh, but lo and behold, you know, we got six, and that's, we got them all on the last hour. A dead lionfish is always a good lionfish, <laughs> regardless. Uh, whether it's you get six today or 300 tomorrow, it's all good. 136, 161. Each tagged fish garners an extra 50 bucks in prize money and lets Reef know exactly where the fish were caught. The teams must report their capture sites with GPS coordinates. That's a tag that came out of one of the fish from uh, from this team. Yeah, that's a tag line fish. Tag number 655. Yeah, okay, Random lionfish are dissected to see what they're eating. In this one stomach, we have five different fish that are inside of it. And their stomach can expand up to 33 times its own size. So they'll eat pretty much all day, every day, whatever fits in their mouth until their stomach is as full as it can get. And then they'll pretty much wait until it gets digested and then just go and eat some more. And they'll eat fish whole, so you'll see all sorts of stuff from blue crab to snapper, grouper. So far, Team Strategery's impressive catch is the front runner for most lionfish, and they did it all without spearing a single fish or even using scuba gear. We knew that the sizes would increase and we knew the numbers would increase, but it's still surprising every time those tallies come in and you realize that in an individual day, two free divers can bring in over 200 lionfish. The total number of fish for this year's derby 461 lionfish. Good job, everybody. Second place in the largest category, 378 millimeters to a team that's been in every Florida Derby since they started, Team Proper. Good job. In first place, with the new record for the Upper Keys Derby, Team Strategery, 233 fish. There you go, good job. Nicely done, Alicia. Really? There you go, guys. $1,000 first place prize. And uh, keep up the good work year round. The Derby is more than just about removing lionfish, and it's a great tool to get people more aware of this issue and realize that lionfish is a problem, we need to do something about it, but also invasive species in general are bad, and we need to work on preventing this from happening again. There's only one way to find out how effective derbies are in suppressing lionfish numbers. Head out to the reef and survey the lionfish that remain. Lad Akins and his team revisit some of their pre-derby survey sites. We're gonna hop in, kinda spread out, survey the reef, uh, find out how many lionfish are here and get the sizes of each of those fish. The first order of business is to measure the size of some of the remaining lionfish. Every uh, third or fourth, Rock coral head down there is maybe one or two under each of them. I can't believe how many are in shallow water here. It's amazing. One of our recent lionfish derbies, the derby brought in over a thousand lionfish in a single day event. And we calculated the consumption, what those lionfish would have eaten over the next year's time if they had not been removed. And the results were pretty astounding. Somewhere between 2 million and 8.8 .8 million prey fish would have been consumed by those thousand lionfish over the next year's time. Tagging is another tool in the fight against these invasive fish. It helps the reef team track down lionfish distribution and migration. The tagging to me was really interesting. They're actually tagging the animals underwater so they're not bringing them up to the surface. And that's important because then they can tag them at any depth. Fish have a swim bladder so that air expands 
as you bring them up. So if you're working really deep, you can't really bring those fish up to the surface. This is one of those sites that before the derby, we had seen quite a number of lionfish and tagged quite a few as well. And we just did another survey on the site and we still saw a lot of lionfish, including some of those that were tagged. So it's pretty obvious that nobody's been to this site during the derby. Gary Mays found out yet again just how difficult it is to handle lionfish safely. When I was taking the lionfish off the spear and in the bag, I put the spear this way and pulled it back. Well, one of the spines got, got me right there on that finger. Unfortunately, on that last one, Gary took a little sting. So uh, he aborted the dive, came up, made a safe ascent, which is good. And uh, right now we're going to get him some hot water and get that hand soaking in the hot water so he can denature that venom and get him back to feeling good. I was really surprised to see the number of lionfish that, that were on here. Um, it just shows how how they're taking over the keys and uh, we need to really get out there and, and start doing some more work and uh, dive some of these lesser dove sites uh, to, to get them off the reef because one thing I noticed down there was a lot of lionfish, the little fish, little bitty fish weren't around. So you know, you know that the, um, the lionfish are probably cleaning them off. Even though we're trying to address this lionfish invasion, we really don't have anything against the fish. So we try to put them down humanely and uh, immersion in an ice water bath like this is one of the most humane ways we can euthanize these fish. So their bodies are just gonna slowly shut down in this very cold temperature and they'll expire without going through uh, too much undue stress. Lionfish are having a dramatic impact on the Florida Keys, but they're still in the early stages of their invasion. In the Bahamas, they are very well established. Lionfish impacts there are profound. Stephanie Green from Simon Fraser University in Vancouver had a recent study that showed in a two-year period in the Bahamas, predation of lionfish decreased the native marine life population by an average of 65%, with some sites showing as high as a 95% decline in just two years. So we're realizing now that the impacts lionfish are going to have may be very, very severe. While we're pretty sure that we are not going to be able to eradicate lionfish, there are some really positive notes in local control. And what we're finding is that active removal programs on a regular basis can bring the lionfish numbers down significantly to the point that they're not really impacting the system. And I think when we look long term and look into the future, what we're hoping for is to minimize those populations, at least in key areas, and allow nature some time to come up with its own biocontrol mechanisms, or at the least, buy some time for new technologies that may be able to affect uh, change on a much broader scale. Scuba divers and competitive derbies help to suppress lionfish numbers, but to manage their explosive growth, most people agree that some form of commercial fishery needs to be considered. Lobster fishermen are finding that lionfish are attracted to bait and are sneaking into their lobster traps. You wanna see some lionfish, here you go. I've never saw a lionfish in my life until about three years ago. I think we caught 32 when we reported each one. It was a big deal to us to get a lionfish. I think I got the world's record at the time, which ended up being like 32 lionfish in a season. By the second season, we were up to as many as probably 50 a day of lionfish in our traps. And we started seeing them a little more in the deep water. So I said, oh, I'm gonna take these around to the restaurant. So we carried them up and down the keys to the chefs at the different restaurants. And now it's starting to expand to other restaurants. I sold about 6,000 pounds of lionfish last year off the boat at $6 a pound, so it became a pretty lucrative little enterprise. The lionfish are coexisting with the lobster, obviously, because you know we're fishing for lobster, we're not fishing for lionfish. At least we're able to market these lionfish. There must be just a million of them, because I'm fishing my traps from 100 feet of water out to 300 feet of water. And the deeper I go, the more lionfish I see. The deeper you go, the bigger they seem to be also. It's pretty incredible. Man, they're getting so Ooh, thick. I, My God. I don't know what they're eating, but they displace the lobster. What happens if you get three or four lionfish in a trap, the lobster really don't want to go in with the lionfish. You might get a couple of lionfish in with a lobster, but the, the lobster don't want to go in with them lionfish. I don't know why. 
Nature usually takes care of itself, so someday, somehow, something will eat them up. So if not, I don't know what the, the end result is going to be here. You know, bad for the reef, but great for the restaurant. This was nice on the plate. You know, I'll take everything you got. I said, what, I, what I've got from you already is already gone. And that's going to win. We have to tear this to zero. Ted Drever owns and operates the Conk House, a popular Key Largo seafood restaurant. He discovered that lionfish were a tasty alternative to heavily stressed species, such as snapper and grouper. Here we are, dear. Lionfish taco. Thank you. Demand is brisk, but initially, it was difficult to convince customers to eat them, since many people thought they were poisonous. All right, and this is today's catch. I got these from Nickel Seafood. So what I like to do is I actually like to skin these fish before I fillet them. I actually go ahead and trace it out as to what I want the fillet to look like. I know what I expect to get. Let's turn it over to the chef. So this skin pulls off very nicely. This is gonna be the fillet that we're looking for right here. Work this off here. Oh, the people love this fish. This fish is a nice, Mild, very similar to hogfish, which is one of the local delicacies down here. Cut off this bones, and that's what you're looking for. Just a nice, a nice fillet right here. This fish here have a very nice taste to it. Every single person who coming in here, they all talking about this is the best fish they ever have. Let's say I have 40 pounds. Less than a day, they are gone. You know, we always have people coming back for more. So this one is ready to go. There's a lot of people who are confused about lionfish when they come in. They actually are scared to eat it. They've got uh, fears built up on something. A lot of people actually say lionfish is poisonous. Oh, they would never eat this fish. It's not poisonous at all. It's actually venomous, and venomous is harmless when digested. But it's actually the quills that hold the venom, not the fillets themselves, not the meat. The meat, really white, really mild delicious, delicious fish and absolutely harmless. The reviews are amazing every time. If there's a silver lining to this lionfish issue and a weakness in lionfish themselves, it's that they taste great. And they are commonly eaten in their native range, they're just not encountered very frequently. So capitalizing on that, uh, we realized that getting lionfish into the market provides incentive for fishermen to go out and remove the fish. While it's generally agreed, the lionfish invasion is grave news for the region. Some people see it as an opportunity. What people have failed to see is how this is really impacting scuba, because it's not all negative. This has really put a focus on scuba and on scuba divers in a way I haven't seen in a while. Rather than us being always taught not to hurt the environment, not to touch the coral, not to touch this, they're asking us to go out and kill these fish. They're actually asking us to go and slay stuff. And environmentalists never ask you to kill stuff. They never want you to touch anything. They want you to always keep it, but we get to kill it. We get to eat it and there's no limits. There's nothing that stops us from whatever we need to do to get rid of these critters. Now, will that make an impact? Probably not. Lionfish are here to stay. We've never said that we hope to eradicate them because basically the ocean currents are like a conveyor belt. It's just gonna to continue to bring them. I tell people that lionfish are part of the Florida Keys story. Lionfish really are a beautiful, wonderful, ornate fish in their native range. But here in the wider Caribbean, they don't belong, and they're causing very severe problems. And this is a problem we know that we started, it's introduced by man, and it's really gonna be up to us to address this.